I love it when you stop by on the weekend. I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot, and this is the weekend of October 20th. And it has been a very interesting weekend for me. I have gotten a lot of extra attention on Twitter this weekend, both good and bad. Lots of good comments were said about me, made me feel all warm and fuzzy inside. Then I had some hard comments, people swearing at me, calling me names, blaming me that a stock has fallen so low after I talked about it months ago saying it was going to run. Well, first off, I don't mind any of that. That's okay. I'm an adult. I can take it. Second of all, all of that extra attention got me a lot of new followers, so I'm happy with that. And third, I'm not sharing stocks with you that are going to run a month or two months from now. I'm a day trader. I am looking for stocks that are going to run tomorrow, the next day, at the most five days, one work week. And these are the sort of stocks I'm sharing with you. Now, I've got a great example just so you understand what's going on here. October 2nd, we looked at three stocks. All those stocks are way down right now. But if you'd have been watching them one to five days after we looked at them, you could have gained 100% gains or more on every single one of them. Let me show you. So we're going to take a look at that video there. I did that October 2nd when we looked at Vino, Stahl, and Grits. And all three of these stocks gave us virtually 100% gains or more over the next one to five days after we looked at it. Now, when I originally found the heat in these charts, I was looking at the six-month, four-hour view. We're going to be looking at the 20-day, one-hour view just because it's easier to see. Now, here's a little bit of extra information I got from Yahoo Finance. The daily stock activity shows you the open, the close, the high. Down there in the bottom right-hand corner in yellow is the price we see these stocks at. And then the arrow shows how many days we had to cover to hit the maximum potential gain. So we're looking at Vino first, ticker V-I-N-O. This blue line tells me when I was here last, October 2nd, and it was $2.07 when we looked at it. Just over a day later, first thing in the morning, she spiked a high of four bucks. That is virtually 100% gain right there, but it was short-lived. It fell fast. That day, she came all the way back down. The following day, she continued falling, and she is well below the price we looked at her at. Right now, she could be considering a breakout. Just food for thought. Now, I know you didn't sell at the high. Hardly anybody gets the high, and if you do, it was probably a lucky poke. But I am thinking you were selling on the way up. You're going, why would I sell on the way up? Because you get more gains. Look, you're here at 50%, 60%, 70%. Put in a market order, a market order to sell and hit your button. Well, you saw it at 80%. Your market order will grab whatever price is at right now. Well, by the time you get your order in, it's gone 82, 83, 84%. You got more than you were expecting. Now it hit the high bubble. It falls back. You didn't sell, but you see it falling. Now you got to sell, right? Hopefully you're selling because you're scared. It's falling. So you're putting in your order. You saw it at 80%. Well, you're putting in your order, chances are it's 76, 72, 70, it's falling. By the time you sell, you got less than you were hoping to get. So it's better to sell while it's climbing with a market order than to wait for it to start falling. This could have just been a pullback, but it wasn't. It was a full dump. So there was your first 100% gain you could have gotten off of Vino. Looking at stall, there's our October 2nd blue line. Our price here was triple zero nine and she took three days to hit her new high of double zero two four you're looking at over 250 percent gains and even when she came back down you were still down here at two that still gave you some good gains and she has fallen all the way back down here and still above where we looked at her but you did have an opportunity within three days to take gains and you could have taken gains the first two days Looking at that last one, Grits, October 2nd, we saw this. The price was $1.70, and look at that run. Five days. You could have taken gains on any one of these days. Five days later, she hit a high from $1.70 to $3.33. 
100% would have been 340. She got close and then she fell away. And even now she is still higher than when we looked at her. But this is what I'm talking about, folks. When we look at stocks, we're looking at stocks that have hot charts. The news is backing up the chart. The chart isn't going to stay that way forever. So when I share a stock with you, put it on your watch list for at least the next five days. After that, I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> Unless I told you this is good for a long hold, I have no clue what is going to happen. All right, speaking of hot penny stocks, let's go take a look at some. Oh, fudge. Mm. Looks like we got a change of plans here, folks. My primary source of information is not cooperating. The otcmarkets.com website is just locked up. I don't know if they're doing maintenance or what, but no matter what ticker I put in, no matter what button I push, I just keep getting blank pages. I had found one ticker I was ready to share with you, ticker VAPR. This is eSight Motors. Her chart's okay, but she just had big news come out where she got 100% of all the financing that she needed for her EV business. Well, I'm not going to be able to share any of that with you now. Well, I mean, I could. There's an entire internet out there. I could get the information in a lot of places. Problem is, I'm running out of time. It's almost 5.30 here, and I don't have anything set up. It would take time to get that all set up. So, I think we're going to have to skip looking at hot stocks today. But I'll tell you what we'll do. Since you're here, a captive audience, yeah. Why don't I share with you how I do my due diligence looking for hot penny stocks by looking at the charts. Now to do this sort of research, all you need is a trading platform. I'm using Thinkorswim. You can use Webull, TradeStation, they'll all work. As long as you have the ability to chart and scan. Now if you own Thinkorswim, I've got a bonus for you. I do a lot of research and when I first started off on here, this was clunky. It was frustrating. It was slow. So I tweaked it. I have made it fluid and easy and quick and I've made a video showing you how I set mine up to do it that way so you can set yours up too. Now the first thing you need to do is get yourself up a penny stock scan. I use two filters, price and volume. Price double zero one to five bucks. I could go down to triple zero one, but in all honesty, I don't see a lot of hot runners coming out of the triple zero zone regularly. Occasionally, yes, but not often enough. So I start my search at double zero one. You can start yours anywhere you want. Then I have volume. And this is a real low number because really it's not about how many shares the stock is moving. I'm interested in that. But the purpose for this is to eliminate all the stocks that have had no volume. All those zeros, there are lots and lots and lots of them, and I don't want to look at them. So by putting any number in here, I get rid of all of those. So then I scan and I bring it up. And the first thing I did to help me with my research was to add this button over here. This is a yellow two. They've got all sorts of them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, all in different colors. And you coordinate these two other tools. Well, I've got my scan coordinated to my chart. So whenever I click that yellow two, voila, look at that. Chart comes up just that quick and easy. I don't have to keep bouncing back and forth. But this isn't as simple as it looks. When I'm doing my research, I'm looking at the charts. I'm looking down here in this bottom corner for low bubbles, for volume. I'm looking for breakouts. My eyes are on the charts. So when I got to keep bringing my eyes back here to put my itty bitty cursor on these itty bitty tiny buttons perfectly, it takes my eyes off of what I'm doing. It's frustrating. So I tweaked this. I made it nice. I changed this scan and I turned it into a watch list. That is one and the same. They are duplicate now. So now I've got my list over here and I can bring up a full chart over here which is great. I've got a lot more room to see, but what I really like about this is that now once I click any of these, I don't need to use my mouse anymore. I can use my keyboard and just hit my arrow. I'm looking at you. I'm not looking at some tiny dot to see if I'm on it or not. So this helps me because now I can keep my eyes focused in this corner looking for what I want instead of having to keep my eyes bouncing back and forth. So I look at all the charts. It can't hurt you, right? So you just start anywhere you want. You can start at the bottom or start at the top. I'm just going to start here. Oh, I don't care. Somewhere in the middle. Boink, we'll start right there. So I am looking 
primarily in this area, but the whole chart matters. But it is over here, the current stuff that is most important. We're going to be looking for volume. We're going to be looking for low bubbles. And we're looking for that price to get close to the 200 or be pulling away from the 200. The 50 counts too, but the 200 is primary. And of course, you have your oscillators. So I am just looking at charts. I have it on a four hour, six month view. That's how I do my heat searches. And I'm looking for what looks like could be a breakout over here. Looks like something is happening. I see volume coming in here. I do see a push. It's not tremendous. The oscillators don't show a lot of heat, but you know, if you're curious, you can go look up the news and the filing, see if there's anything happening. Come back here and then I just start looking. And each one of these, I will analyze looking at the volume, looking at the low bubble, looking at the oscillators and the price relative to the 200. Here, we've got a lot of volume coming in. She was underneath all of her SMAs, crossed the 200, the 20, the 50, bounced, and she's pushing up with a lot of volume. This looks like she's eager. I would at least be checking it out. All of our oscillators show signs of pushing up right now. These are what you're looking for, just signs. And if it's real flat, zoom in on it. See if it looks like anything. Oh, now this is looking good, okay? This is one of the key signals I am looking for with what I call atypical breakout charts, folks. This is an atypical breakout chart. 200 day falling like a ski slope. Price deep underneath it. You see eagerness. It is trying to show you it wants to go up. It goes up and then comes down, and I want you to see this, higher than where it started. That is the key point. You want to go up, break the 200 with a wick, push that wick as far up as you can, then come down no lower than where you started. Now you've got my attention. I believe it wants to break out. So I'm going to watch it now. So it is going to do something and I don't know what it's going to do, but just before it breaks out, I'm going to look for what I call the crouch and pounce. She's been going sideways here. 200 is getting closer and closer and closer with no more activity. And then you have a pull away. You have the crouch, just like a cat does. When a cat is going to jump up, what's the first thing it does? It goes down. It crouches down and then pushes up. You see that on the charts a lot. So we've got a crouch here, hitting a low bubble, turning around and coming back up. We say our oscillators are all setting up for growth. They're all pushing up. There's a pattern for us. Our PPO, percentage price oscillator, is pushing up. My ADX, my trend continuation, is pressing down. This is a straight line drawn whenever your trend is going in one direction. As soon as that trend changes, my line is going to change direction. It may go up, it may go down. It doesn't matter. If it changes direction, I'm not in an uptrend anymore. Well, when you see this going up and you see the red one going down and they're spreading apart, guaranteed 100% your stock is climbing. And it works exactly the opposite. If your PPO is coming down and your ADX is coming up, like right there, what do you see? The price is coming down. Once they got close, they then spread and the price rises. I love these. I put my ADX under my PPO and look for this pattern because it's very easy to see. So the oscillators are strong. Volume is starting to come in. She's had her crouch and she's working on her pounce. This would be one to at least go look at the news, see if anything's going on. And you can do this watching movies, folks. Honestly, I do this when I'm watching TV. I have the TV there. I have my screen here and I just dart back and forth and I just keep looking. I do this all day. I honestly like looking at charts. I find it comforting. And then when I find one that's hot, first thing I want to do is share it with you folks. Honestly, that's the truth. Here's one. This is NMG, Nouveau Monde Graphite. Downhill trend, atypical breakout chart. Got close to the 200, but no breakout there. We don't have our best signal. The directional intentional spike that pushes that wick way up. I love those. But what we do have, we have a low bubble. We have volume coming in and a bounce off of this. Underneath all the SMAs, there's the 9, the 20, the 200 haul, and the 50. She went through all of them. That's strength, folks. Now, look at the size of our bars. They're getting bigger and bigger. 
more indicators that strength is there. She has pushed all the way up to the 200, broke the 200, and has come back down higher than where she started. We're loving this. Osculators, we got a crossover on our PPO pushing up. MACD has crossed the signal line. This is all looking good. And our RSI is high up at 67, just coming out of the overbought. Now, I hear a lot of people worried about stocks that are in the overbought area. They're afraid they're going to fall immediately. Well, it's probably going to come down sooner or later, but who knows when. Look, the way I see it, you want your fire as hot as it can be because we're day traders. We're not talking about a play a week from now. We're talking about a play tomorrow. So yeah, I want overbought. I want fire. I want red. I want everything pushing up. This chart looks really good, folks. I would go look up NMG right now. You, you, you. Ooh, she's had a nice strong run today. She had volume today, no bubbles. She's breaking the 200 and all of the oscillators are on fire. You, 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 it's worth a peekaboo. Checking another one here. That's uh, looking like a setup, right? We had a breakout. She came down higher than she started, bouncing off the 20. Here comes our 50, about ready to cross the 200. That's gonna give us a golden cross. These are all power signs. The only thing we're missing here is volume. It's been tapering off. Our oscillators are struggling right now. It looks like they're fighting to figure out what they're gonna do, but that looks like it's on the edge of the ledge of a breakout, NXOPF. Right now we're at 35% gains. There's another one bouncing off of the low. It did come down lower. It doesn't look super exciting, but you're looking for a change of trend. She's been falling, 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 but you've got to make sure she's just not bouncing. That's why everything else comes into play. We've got some very strong oscillators. That RSI shot up hard. Our MACD has taken a quick turnaround, just like our PPO did. Everything looks interesting here. Even our volume has been coming in stronger here in the last few days. All right, so let's jump on down to some low volume now. Let's come on down to, let's say, 13%. All right, just gliding through here. There's one you may want to consider, right? She's had some big rips, showing signs of wanting to be over the 200. You're always looking for that. Signs that say, I want to go up. Then she had a big fall away here, hit a low bubble. Off of that low bubble, we start looking for a change of trend. She was underneath all the SMAs, crossed them all. Look at the bars get big. Woo, she's taken off. Big long wick coming down, did not fall any lower than where she started. Osculators are all strong. Every single one of them are ripping right now. There's another one. Laughing my effing... <laughs> no, this is L-M-F-A. M-K-G-P. I'll get in there. Oh, come on now, folks. That is set up for something to happen. Look, she has been consolidating, accumulating in this straight line, riding on her 50-day, and right now it has just started to lift. She's touched the 200, touched the 200. She's getting pinched. That price is pinched between the 50 and the 200. Look at this, folks. She's going to pop. She's going to pop. Now, when you get everything coming into a point like that, a decision has to be made. Am I going to pop up or am I going to pop down? Well, the way you figure that out is you look at your oscillators. Are they showing strength up or are they showing strength down? This is starting a crossover right now, pushing up. We are about ready to cross the signal line, pushing up. Our RSI is pushing up. It's all gradual, granted, but we are at that vulnerable point right now. This could easily be a breakout. MKGP. So this is what I do, folks. I look for volume. I look for bubbles. There's another one to consider. Now, she is way down, okay? She has the volume. She has the low bubble. She is coming up on top, but she's still under her 50, and she is a long ways from that 200. But again, to take the few minutes it takes to look at the filings and the press releases to find something, you may be getting in at the best price, super low. Why wait for it to be all the way up here? Like, like Nate's. Uh, we looked at Nate's, which is doing a merger with JP Energy, and that was back, oh my God, maybe 10 days ago, we looked at it when it was at uh, 
0004 and it's at two and a half cents right now so you are looking at six seven hundred percent gains right there and that was news that still has to be fulfilled but that stock is running every single day she's not making any money people got in early on that one this could be an early play you never know until you check the catalyst bowl what else we got here there's another one folks she's setting up she was downhill trend underneath the 50, underneath the 200, hit this low, and now she's not underneath the 50 anymore. There's a big spike going through our 200, back down, higher than where she started, still on top of the 50, floating on our nine day towards the 200. All of our SMAs are starting to curve up. Volume is weak, but position is great. Oscillators are all pushing up right now. Gradual, but they're going the right direction. You see what I'm talking about here, folks? Oh my God. There's another one you got to check out. Palatin Technologies, ticker PTN. Look at all the volume that has just come in. Now, I want to back up here and show you something. Do you see that W right there? Boink, 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 boink. W normally follows with a surge, an M normally follows with a dump. M for murder, W for win. Maybe seven out of 10 times you can count on those to happen that way. Osculators on this thing are just outrageous. This is looking beautiful. Look at these SMAs turning strong right now. I'd be looking at PTN. Boy, we're getting more hot stocks doing our chart searching than we do just talking about stocks. All right, I don't want to waste any more of your time, though. I don't think this is a waste. I think this is great information, folks. I am teaching you how to fish. Every day I bring you three fish. That's great. I don't mind feeding you, but I would rather you be able to feed yourself. But when you learn how to feed yourself, don't abandon me. Please keep watching my videos. I will share as much information as I can with you. Now, would you believe I do this two to four hours a day? going through charts, and I enjoy it. I would suggest that you practice at it, folks. Look for those atypical breakout charts. They're easy to identify. 200-day SMA coming down like a ski slope, price way up underneath it. Soon as that 200 starts to level off into the parking lot, that's when you get the price breaking through and getting a nice run. They're easy to identify, and they are the most probable breakouts that you're going to find. We'll talk about other chart setups on another day. Practice these, folks. See if you can find some of these atypical breakout charts. Find a hot catalyst to match it. Put it on your watch list and see what happens. I bet you're better at it than you think you are. I do apologize that we didn't have our regular show today and talk about stocks, but I can't control everything. But hopefully, I've shared some information here that will help you. Remember, folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. Thanks.